Church of Uganda until I came here. When I came here, I said I would never leave. <laughs> when I came here, I'm a Mugisu. I found that Sunday the Mugisu were leading. I said, so you can ask you can <laughs> And the first growing up in the village, our little church, 
we had uh, we used to pray in Uganda, and the one who leads was called Umubulizi. Umubulizi. He was the only man who would run the show from from January to December. Umubulizi. His, his work is Umubulila. So if it's boring, you are bored the whole year. <laughs> But here we are, you have a medical doctor, you have an engineer, you have uh, the vice chancellor, you no, know, we speak and it, it, it makes us feel nice. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to serve. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not a bed of roses to serve the church. There is a lot of sacrifice. These men and women that you see. My wife is a chief warden. I'm going to introduce her. But <laughs> <laughs> someday she can be away. <laughs> then I say, ah, today I'm not going to cook, but then I want to eat. <laughs> Why do you cook? The other day, Father General came to visit me. Yes. He found me in the kitchen. The best cut of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm called Dr. Peter Wakoba. Um, I'm married, and you have to take <laughs> and uh, they are, we, um, we have three daughters and one son plus other children who God gave us to take care of. Some are even older than our biological children. And uh, who is Wakoba Peter? I come from um, Manafa district, a sub county called Kato sub county. I'm a medical doctor. A little bit about me, I, I did medicine, I was an orphan, and nobody does these things. Like I was told, uh, telling Christians in the, in the first service, fast, if you want to, to be okay, make peace with yourself, and I encourage children to fast, make peace. They, they say what they want to be. Me, I wanted to become a doctor, I lost parents. Yeah very early in my childhood, mm. but I managed to make it. I went to Barra University, did medicine on government, came back. Mm. That, mm. At that time, I went and worked, worked in Mbale uh, district, went, came back to Makere, did public health, master of public health. I went back to be a district medical officer, DHO. Mm. Yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> After that, I came back, did monitoring and evaluation, and then I said, this, after doing M and E, I go back to the, I think I'm going to do the same things that I've been doing, so let me move on. So I did M and E, I came back, I joined the Uganda AIDS Commission, that's where I work, as head monitoring and evaluation. And a few years ago, I said, but I'm forgetting medicine. I went back and did the pre-obstetrics and gynecology, so I'm a practicing gynecologist. In office, you find me at the Commission. In a, if you want to consultation, you can you find me at Nigeria Hospital. Nigeria the Hospital there, I go there partly, and then we go to the medical center. And uh, I think some of you are my patients. I, I want to mention it, but it's okay. <laughs> so, I'll talk about family health. Kindly, even if you don't like me, just listen. And I'm going to talk about simple things which we can all do in order to be healthy. In the beginning, I'll talk in the context trying to talk about the Bible and the way it's related to health. And then I'll also speak like a doctor. And uh, before I go very far, I might forget we have a health camp <coughs> from first 
to start of September, be part of it. I don't know whether they are, are there health workers here, doctors? <coughs> if they are, please give us a hand. That's where uh, it's, uh, you can serve the Lord through that. Okay. We have a theme for this month. And the theme is unity. Drawn from Psalms 133. Unity. And I'm talking about family health. If you want to test the unity of the family, if you want to test if it is a family, if it is a communicable disease, as in a disease which can be transmitted from one person to another, they will still start labeling. You are the one who brought it. You are the one who brought it. I told you not to go to that place. Now you went, you brought the disease. There is no unity. Right now in Kayunga, there is a a sub county called Busana. And there is a family of a person got cholera from there. Now the whole community, you are the one who brought the disease. You are the one, you see, there is no unity. Because there is a health problem. So the relationship, and Father General, thank you for that, is clear. You know, this Father General is very, he came, he told me I'm going to talk about health. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Then later on, he said the family health. Then, but anyway, I'll just if I mix up things, forgive me. And if you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, it's really everything is about health. The miracles that Jesus Christ performed. What was he doing? He was preaching the word of God about being healthy and healing people, physically healing them. The story of the man with the leprosy who was healing. The one, the blind man was healing. The lady who had the uh, abnormal uterine, oh sorry, bleeding, touched just and healed. So the whole Bible, the scriptures, if you sum them up, it's about health. So, in this month, we've been talking about matters of unity, being good neighbors, loving one another. And loving one another starts with you. Do you love yourself? Are you your best friend before you cross over? I can assure you, if you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody. You can't love your neighbor. Try it out, you'll see. So, in Pro Proverbs 4, Chapter 4, verses 20 to 22. 20 says, My son, pay attention to what I say and turn your ear to my words. I have told you that the Bible talks about health. Talk about positive, a living, positive, purposefully serving the Lord. So listen, read the Bible, understand it. Whatever we are talking about is coming from the Bible. 22 says, for they are the life of those who find them. No, that one, let's go. Now, why family, family health? Again, the Bible says, God's word shall be health to our body. That means it's spiritual for us to be healthy and that God wants us to be alive in a healthy body. Now, to define health, I don't want to make this an academic uh, talk, but they are experts. The World Health Organization, if you want to be correct in matters of health, you must refer to the World Health Organization. And let me define it. It says, this is what they say, health is a state of complete 
physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. It's a very nice definition. And mark social well-being. You see people, we are driving nice cars, we are not going to hospital, we are everywhere and say, so, ah, now this one has studied, he has many masters, he's very, yeah, he's everything. He's even eating well. I am telling you, you are not. How is your mental status? Just walk around. People will tell you I am healthy. Because the person is not in the hospital, you think he's healthy. Even the one who is moving, covered, you know these people. You ask how are you saying, I'm fine, I'm very fine. Even those of us who are driving, because we are not fine. That's why you see we are driving on pavements, everybody is hooting, everybody is abusing. You are not healthy. I can assure you, and if you did that, if you drove on the pavement today, you are not healthy. <laughs> Sometimes I hit very hard. Now one day I went, I was driving a clock around the clock tower. There was stone in the a stone in the middle. First guy packed. Another one packed. For the border, they were dodging. Everybody was dodging. Now these people we call them mad. Just came, was carrying his socks, picked the stone, and through it. And then Sanita came back to normal. Who was mad? <laughs> Who was mad? <laughs> Who was healthy? This man was even more healthy. I'm telling you, we are packing now. We see police, police. Just a stone there. The guy just came, he was with his mover, everything. He just put the son and put there and solved the problem. <laughs> I'll give you like live examples. One day I was in a bus, get away. When you are going to come to Bali, there's a place called Kamonkoli. And as the bus stopped, there were two ladies seated behind, um, next to me, across. And then outside there was a man. They were, and the wife, they were from the garden. At around 10, the man in the east, we use the uh, banana stems to feed cows. So this guy was carrying banana stem here and uh, a hole, and the wife was following with a baby in the back, and she was carrying firewood. So the old man lamented and said, hmm, Olaba, how you might find that those people are so happy for us in Kampala, we are there looking for money. My little mind came back at 5 a.m. <laughs> and you see those people were moving, we would say, ha, these ones are traveling in a bus, they are ahead of them. So health is not just the absence of disease. Take home that one. So, in a family, how is your interaction? Are you interacting with your family? Are you talking to them? Are you aggressive to them? It's not having what to eat, buy food, put it there, and then ah, it's sorted. The banana you are putting. How is your relationship with your neighbors? And Kampala is worse. But even if the neighbor is making noise, they're attacking me. Nobody will get out. And we think we are healthy. You know you have you 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 have put security padlocks, they make noise, you have dogs, you have security cameras, but you are still worried. And then you are healthy. Okay? The family is a primary and most basic biosocial cell. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that uh, family health, uh, family of a person starts at home. 
it has a support, you have a sick person at home, it is the family to make a decision to take that person to hospital, but then there are expenses and the feelings and emotions. Like I told you, have a sick person at home, that's when you will know. Sometimes you have to go without meals. I work in Mulaga, you know. They are asking for things you cannot afford. Now tell me that that person at home is okay. Sometimes, even when you have the money, it can't support you, you can't be healthy. And actually, the more money you have, the more problems you have, the more unhealthy you are. So let's not compare each other, but first look at yourself, are you healthy? Unity, just like the theme says, is like a charity, it begins at home. <coughs> Healthy minds start from home. You cannot be united with others and be happy at the church when you are home with the others. Don't come here and pretend and clap when you have not sorted things out at home. And in Timothy, 1 Timothy, chapter 3, 2 to 5, it talks about, especially us men, how we should be faithful, have good temperament, self-control, self-respect, respect, being hospitable, not being drunkards, But we are also talking about women. Some talking about men, about them, but also women and uh, children and believers. Be good examples. So managing a family requires good health relationships at home. Then you can extend that to the community. You want to be clapped at in the community and at home when you enter, all the children will go to their bedrooms. Some family issues that we face, that we see. We have broken homes, parents have no time for children. Sometimes we tend to justify that if we sit there, then what will they eat? Yeah, good reason, but find some time. For, because of that, even the children don't have time for their parents. So when you come back, they go to their bedrooms, and these days they are phones, they are, they are on the phone. You find a mother who has um, nurtured nine children, they all go away, and the all the nine, none of them takes care of, of the mother. So because of we, we are so busy, there's lack of love, there are dangerous habits that which can be. Drugs are everywhere. There are single mothers. We don't know the reasons why they became single mothers and society portrays them as they have bad behaviors. They are not, you know, they are not well groomed. And yet there was no to groom them. Teenage, teenager pregnancy. You know pregnancy is so simple. It's very simple to get pregnant. Like I, I used to have a lecture, I was a pediatrician, who tell you, it's very easy to become a, a father, <coughs> difficult to be one, because you have to, it's a long journey. And when there is no peace at home, then the solutions, we look for, people look for peace elsewhere, either stay at home every time, Somebody is working every time somebody is in the office, and I can assure you for you, those of you who stay in the office, which means you are incompetent. You are in the office from 7 to midnight. What are you doing? What are you doing? At least me, I have an excuse. Before I leave, a mother comes and she has to deliver you. But you are in the office, what are you doing? What are you doing? And if, 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 if 
you die, you become sick. The replacement is knocking on the door. Immediately. Immediately. Don't joke around. So, a, a, a few things that we can do. What is the, uh, the, the, the commonest killer of health, of families, of society is stress. And Proverbs chapter 19 verses 12 tells us a cheerful heart is, is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up bones. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. If, for me, if a patient comes to me, I ask, I ask, so here they are talking about a cheerful heart. They are not meaning this heart which pumps blood into the iota, what and then even the cover, what all the They are talking about the mind. And most of the things that we do are in our mind. And I'm not saying that you should not live stress free. No. When you don't have stress, then you also you are dead. I'm telling you, there is stress, know how to manage it, and let the stress not manage you. You wake up in the morning, and everybody is stressed. Your immediate neighbor is stressed with you, stressed with you. You get out, the gate man gets his chair, then you come to the road. He don't want to give away. <laughs> and those of us who drive government cars, God forbid. For you, you want to be given a priority, even when you are not going to do anything. <laughs> you want to be given priority, priority. Even when the driver is alone in the car, you want Am I speaking to somebody? <laughs> that is stress. And people know how to abuse. Has a taxi man ever <laughs> abused you? For one year, you will not do, you will forget it. You will never forget it. <laughs> hey, but have they ever abused you? <laughs> you will never forget. But you see, those are things you can control. As long as you have not knocked anybody, as long as just be calm. Be calm. It takes just one minute or two minutes of waiting and somebody passes. Then you're getting stressed the whole day. It is stress will kill you. Once you have stress, you will even forget that you are driving. And then the next thing, you are just you are causing havoc. Just try it. For those of you who drive cars, try it tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you step out of home like this. You just even if you are just acting, just say bye to your neighbor properly. Pretend to give a hug, say bye, enter your car. Even the gate man, for once, with when you are dropping children, say have a nice day. When you enter the car, just choose any music. I like Christom Tomlin's Healing Rain. You can even decide to play that one alone and reach office. And when you reach office, you are acting a movie now. Say hi, hi boss. Now I do. You will see what they'll tell you next. You will see how it will feel that day. You have solved many problems. The stress has problems. Stress is a killer. Stress will make you say very bad things that you will regret. Alcohol. 
I, if I brought each of you, I gave you a glass of whiskey. All of us here, <laughs> you will see. <laughs> People will start to say, they will talk about things. <laughs> Some of you say, hey, I can't even feel my legs. <laughs> I was uh, talking to the first service. There was a village. They were taking uh, Somebody decided to give them methanol. It's tox toxic. And you know, all toxic things go for the most sensitive places. Those which are divided, cells are, those cells are dividing quickly. So this one goes to the eye. So the sun is looking at, at two. At around four, they are not seeing anything. <laughs> they say, this one, they local. They say, can you know? It is even becoming dark very fast. You should continue bringing this kumbe. They are becoming blind. They are becoming blind and they don't know. That's the power of alcohol. To make you make you blind, to make you dance and forget even when the generator is, is running for you and dancing. Oh, whose music is that? In the Bible, Genesis 19, 32 to 38 talks about this, the Lord, those of you who need to read the Bible, Lot and his two daughters. These daughters thought that all the men were finished and they wanted to propagate. The only man that they saw was their father. What did they do? Give the guy alcohol. He drank. And he did not know that he was sleeping with his daughters. And the daughters produced their, their sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is alcohol. I'm moving reproductive health. I want to touch things on things which are everyday things. It's a reproductive health. Make a decision. You give birth to children that you can handle. If you can handle a hundred, it is okay. If you can so that you see, we are fond of after growing and then we start blaming our parents just because they were poor, they couldn't. And they also made a decision to have 20, yet in actual sense, they could afford one. And in the Bible, there is this thing, verse when people misinterpret, go and produce and fill the world. But the very Bible goes ahead, Genesis 1, 20 says, then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and govern it. Rain over fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals. He's not telling you to fill the earth. He said, Fill and govern. Money you cannot manage. <laughs> so, it's in good faith. He said these doctors now they have brought these things. What, what? Think about it. Because they are children. Don't blame me. Manage your feeding, ladies and gentlemen. Eat well. Eat natural food. Eat uh, whole grain. Cereal. Eat. I don't know whether there are mangoes there, eat them. Even when the children of God were traveling to, to the promised land, manna, you go and read what manna is. It was not a, it was not pizza, it was not a, sausage, burger, it is cereal, natural food. Eat natural. I'm not saying don't eat those things that might people might hate me. Okay, eat in moderation. <laughs> and God encourages us says in Genesis 1:29 says, I give you every blessed 
every seed bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that bears fruit with the seed in it. Uh, this GM was there are fruits which grow without seeds. You've seen that? Yeah. Those ones don't eat. They are so doesn't eat the ones which have seed. Those are natural. And he goes ahead and warns it's not good to eat too much sugar. Too much sugar is uh, too much honey. Honey is sugar anyway. Don't eat too much. When you visit our clinic, shall tell you please moderate your uh, your sugar. Put down your sugar. It is good. Put down your, everything done excessive is not good. Excessive salt is not good. Excessive sugar is not good. Everything done excessively is not good. If you want to make excessive money, it is not good. Don't <laughs> enforce you to do funny things. <laughs> The Bible has many scriptures about eating. Even when performing miracles. Did they say that God uh, fed, the, fed the people on, on sausages? No, it was fish. And bread. And bread is made from wheat. It's natural. Not sausages, cappuccino, what all those things. Anyway. The... the I can take you to a certain place next year and you see how people are destroying Rosanias. You want us to go? <laughs> the fathers, they, have, they want to entertain me. <laughs> so get prepared for you, Rosania. As I come to the table, hey, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's, let me give you 10 tips how to stay. Stay healthy. Now I'm talking as a doctor. You're welcome. Um, in order to be, to be to be healthy, I hope you read your Bible. Make sure that you read your Bible. But as a doctor, get moving. Get up and exercise. Get up and exercise. Do exercise. Now some of you are looking at me, but this man doesn't know that I don't have money for the gym. No. The gym is everywhere. Walk. Walking is the best. Look here, during COVID, he sent a video to all of us, how he was doing exercises, everything. You did a good job. I think that's why you are healthy. <laughs> so do exercises. And try it. Try it. If you exercise after take your blood pressure you will see if you are hypertensive it will be to get tending towards the normal range eat whole food that one we have talked about and i i forgot to say that staying healthy involves involves making certain choices and many of these are in your hands should somebody tell you how to exercise or take you for exercise? Well, eating no more dead whatever, should somebody tell you how to eat it? It's in your hands. Unless if you don't have it. Uh, if you smoke, try to quit. Smoking is bad. But when you somebody is withdrawing, you don't just stop smoking. That's for somebody, will, that person will die including alcohol. Stop. Today you are not drinking. For those of you who have spouses, you will tell them, okay, you have been taking 10, come down, 9, until 1, and then you will withdraw. But if you do it immediately, you get what we call, we call it withdraw. It's okay. um, make sleep a priority. Please rest. Please don't work up to midnight, come back, reach home at four, and sleep for two hours, and go back to the office again. That office must be special. Have rest, at least six hours. But, and if you are older, like some of us, you get, get longer hours of sleep. It's good, it relaxes your body, it makes your brain work better. We have a syndrome, you know, a person is in bed 
has a charger there, has an extension there, because they want to stay on WhatsApp the whole night, or watch or YouTube, or watch movies. That's not good. Switch off and, and rest. You'll catch up later. You can see the person enters the taxi like this, uh, sits like this, pop, and starts sleeping. Supposed to get off from, from Chireka, and these ones of Chireka go up to you find yourself in one day care. <laughs> Which happens. <laughs> and there are moments when you don't, you know there are stages of sleep. There's a place, there's a time when you are deep. You are deep as in, you may not have control over some things. <laughs> and you are in a taxi, you are having saliva this side. <laughs> Then you are inconveniencing your neighbor who is next to you. <laughs> That's because you didn't have enough sleep. That's all. Alcohol, I've talked about it. Stop it. Then stay hydrated. Please drink. Anybody with water, please? Drink. 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 Most is made using water and pure uh, millet flour or maize flour. Please drink. I want, this is not an academic class. I say drink three liters. No. If you can drink 10, you drink. It's okay. But make sure that you drink, don't stop, and drink clean water, please. Um, then another one is focus on prevention. Prevention prevent anything happening. How is your environment? How are you dumping the rubbish? Are there flies? Can you work on them because they transmit? Hmm? Vaccination, are you vaccinated? Are your children vaccinated? That's prevention. Go for routine checkup. At least one, 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 uh, once a year. And like I told you, we have a health camp. You come, we shall soon. They are even, go and take blood pressure. But, uh, but now people start saying, oh, I have to rush. Oh, I have to go. Yeah. The first take of blood pressure. They know your numbers. Everyone, uh, bong, how people, you know you have big blood pressure. Is it normal? Is it in the normal range? <laughs> exactly. Know it. Know your numbers. So that if you deviate from the normal, then you know. And most of these diseases that you get diabetes, Hypertension, they come slowly, but because we are not checking, and if you catch them early, in most cases you don't need drugs. Just, just stress this one we have overemphasized. It, don't forget the other movie we talked about. Last year, I know there are children here, but I'm not meaning exactly what you think. Practice safe sex. Hey. Abstain. <coughs> be faithful. Be. Don't do LGBTQI. Same sex. Don't. There's nothing that you'll get gain from there apart from embarrassment and being a nuisance. Self sex. The consequences of uh, these days, the modern thing is DNA test, DNA test. If you do the right thing, we don't have those problems. If you don't want, it's also okay, you will face it. In conclusion, Corinthians 6, 19, to point the end between there. Do you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor your bodies. Be careful, do what is right. Let's take care of our bodies, including our mental illness, so that this temple of our Lord can do the purpose for which it were created to live healthy and above all serve the Lord, to read your Bible. And Matthew, we've been talking about this since, since the beginning of the service. Matthew 11, 20 says, come to me, all 
you who are weary and burdened, I, I will give you rest. Do everything, turn to God and say, here I come. I'm burdened, I'm weary. Grant me rest. May God bless you. Glory, come and pray. We thank you, God our Father, for this your servant who has spoken to us your word. We pray that our heart will not be hurt, but what we have heard, we will put into practice, Lord. We pray that you bless all the fathers, all the parents in this church, and that may we live together in unity as one body of Christ. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.